to make and build a faster fast first they start by the hammer to make balls full ash tree different figures like Ramses, Anubis, Tutankhamun second step they wrap it with linen, glue and powder alabaster two days under the sun to make it solid the third step a hole inside like this Thank you. Enough. What's your name? Oh, wow. Ellen. Ellen, big hand for Ellen, please. <laughs> big hand for Ellen, please. Ellen. Yeah. Go on, please. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Yes. Go on. 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 Thank you, Alan. Excuse me. After the straight hole, they use gently hold by these tools. Carve inside. Yes. Gently hold. Oh, that's smart. After the gently hold, they removed it by the hammer. The first step, they polished it from outside with different fire. They start by hard to soft one. Stand the stone to make it very smooth. Last step, they put it in the oven. The fifth step, they put it in the oven, then they covered it with the wax. They wax it to see the natural color. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is all the story to make hand paint a faster bath. What about it? The second bath. The second bath, still a faster, but machine. We call it here faster alabasta. <laughs> Only one hour to make machine alabasta fast. Hold it there, please. But about the weight. Heavy. Heavy than, heavier than the handmade alabasta fast. I think that's good. So now, now we go inside to spend your money. What's your name, If you like, use it for water, come put a plastic bag or put a glass inside. Three colors for the alabaster. The first color, green, alabaster. Waiting you to say wow. Wow. <laughs> Second color, white, alabaster. Wow. Very good. Third, brown, alabaster. They have got a black stuff, like this, they call it basal or basal. Basal is volcanic stone, solid. The color never ever move. What about the fake one? If you try to remove the color, it comes out. Try to break it, easy to break it. This is soft stone. Sometimes they collect the broken stuff, they stick it, they glue it together. Okay? I'm not finished. I keep magic section over there. Hold on me, please. Magic. Magic section. Come here, please. Here, we have got the magic section. We call it here moon stone. Moon stone to close in the dark. You come here, please. Where to come from? Shakira. 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 You please, excuse me. Yes, come here, please. Yes. I uh, will make the light off because it's tough to close in the dark. I'm sorry, Shakira. Yeah. Nazil. Nazil. Happy birthday to you! Oh my god! Ah. And I keep the, magic, the Egyptian man here. This is the Egyptian man. By the way, this is the god of fertility, the god Amun Me. Thank you. Behind you, handmade onyx. Onyx! Oh my god! 
<laughs> he didn't know what to do. He's inspecting you. Hello. Excuse me. Yeah. I say, that's it. No. You don't like that, man? My husband is my husband. Where is his life, man? Impressive, isn't he? Come here, please. Come here. Excuse me. We'll, we'll see him on the walls of Lux for him. And the walls of Lux. Esse é o templo da mãe adotiva ou a mãe egípcia de Moisés. O nome dela era Hatshepsut. E esse templo foi construído para ela, provavelmente, muito provavelmente, com Moisés na liderança da construção. Porque isso era comum que os filhos tomassem conta da construção dedicado aos seus pais. Então, muito provavelmente, Moisés tomou conta dessa construção e até subiu nesses degraus. Isso é uma coisa muito interessante para a gente saber, uma experiência única. Um caminho longo para seguir. Ok, chegamos aqui. Oh, you guys want a picture here? No. Or, let me know. No primeiro palco, vamos dizer assim, no primeiro estágio. Vamos subir aquele segundo agora. Por isso que o Moisés estava acostumado a subir montanhas. Quando chegou no Monte Sinai, ele não teve problema para subir lá. É, realmente escavado dentro da montanha, pura pedra. Esse templo, como tudo aqui no Egito, né? Clima bem seco. Em cima há várias, várias estátuas de deuses. Vamos subir agora essa segunda parte ali. Bem aqui na ponta dessa escada a gente tem esse falcão que é um símbolo de proteção no Egito, chamado Horus. Correndo, correndo. Esse é o Elmer. Subindo correndo. Estamos chegando aqui no final dos últimos degraus daquela escada comprida que a gente acabou de mostrar. E essas são as, as estátuas aqui na porta do, do templo, bem na entrada dele. Então, vamos dar uma geral aqui. Oi? E essa é a vista daqui de cima. Meu amor, vem cá. Esses são os degraus. Ah, esse... é o seguinte, ó. É muito... A gente vai ficar aqui pertinho. Provavelmente o tempo que. Vem cá, vem Moisés cá que vai. Esse é mais legal. Supervisionava a construção. Para a mãe. Mãe de Gipsa Lula. Domingo agora. Aqui está o templo da Hatshepsut por dentro, o arco está todo destruído aqui. Tudo 
muitas colunas derrubadas. Eles estão um egípcio característico daqui, a sua hora do almoço. Então olha o cartucho da rádio aqui. O sol é simplesmente insuportável, é muito quente. Aqui, logo ali atrás, as rochas. Grande colunas. E aqui vou mostrar uma coisa interessante que a gente aprendeu hoje, sempre nessas inscrições egípcias. Aqui a gente aprendeu várias letras hoje. Quando, quando a gente vê esse, esse, vamos dizer assim, esse retângulo arredondado em volta de algumas letras ou símbolos, significa que era o nome da pessoa ou o nome do rei, rainha, do faraó. Então, ali está escrito Hatshepsut em egípcio. Ok, estamos cruzando o Nilo agora. Olha lá, Denilson. A gente está cruzando o rio Nilo, na cidade de Luxor. Essa musiquinha legal é aqui do, do barco. A gente acabou de sair daquela ponta ali. Vamos subir até um outro templo de uma deusa aí. Vou mostrar um pouco do Nilo agora, tá? Na verdade, é um... o pessoal está fazendo farra aqui no, aqui no barco. Nós estamos em dois, duas balsas. Todo esse pessoal é do nosso grupo. aqui no nível vamos andar nele a gente ainda está cruzando aqui o nilo ali no fundo está olá, olá. o templo do, da, da Hatshepsut que a gente foi agora há pouco toda aquela parte rochosa que a gente foi atrás daquelas montanhas ali é bem pertinho do nilo Okay. Ah. Ah. 
Daddy, 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 Mais um <risos> templo de um faraó, muito majestoso esse templo, muito grande. Vamos aqui. É esse grupo. Então vamos dar uma olhada aqui. Olha que se para o templo. What's the function of the first temple, the mortuary temple? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. What's the function of the temple? To keep the soul. Oh, yeah. To sustain the soul and the afterlife. Thank you very much. To sustain the soul of the dead and the afterlife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Professor! Okay, so if somebody dies, they would build him like we touch him soon. Wow. <laughs> Are we glad you're We're glad to this girl. <laughs> 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 Anyways, like the temple we saw, the temple of Queen Hatshepsut, that was uh, the first kind of temples that we talked about. The mortuary temple, the funerary temple that started a little construction at the foot of the pyramid. Those of you who went down with me all the way to the valley temple of King Kefren, the one across from the Sphinx, saw how small the temple was in the old kingdom that later on became very elaborate the soul in the afterlife and by destroying the temple or tearing it down that would totally cut off the supplies of the soul in the afterlife and that would mean horrible things. Uh, unlike the mortuary temple, unlike the first type of temple, the temples that were dedicated to various gods and goddesses, those that acted as the dwellings of gods, would mean to maintain a fixed design. Like when you have your own mortuary temple, you can have it on any kind of design that you would like to. You can have any kind of design. But when we're talking about a temple dedicated to a god or goddess, like a dwelling of a god or a goddess, they would need to keep five elements, no matter how the temple is. Big, small. They would need to keep five main elements of the temple. Those five main elements are the entrance or the pylon. So each one of those temples must have a pylon, a huge gateway. In case of this one, this one is 40 meter high and about 12 meters wide. Somebody asked me a question, how do we manage to levitate those blocks of stones and take them from one level to another? Check that mud brick cram behind you. This is exactly how they managed to take those blocks of stones from one level to another. Oh, it gives you an idea of how they were able to build those huge pylons or those huge pyramids. Because of the pyramid, they would build four of those massive pyramids. One of the temple, like the huge pylons in this way, they had a huge massive pyramid to go all the way down to enable them to drag those heavy blocks of stones. This is, this is here is a this here is evidence that they used those Right behind this mother cramp, you have to see how, how they were able to make those beautiful round columns. For some reason, they left the first three columns unfinished. Just like they left this mud brick cramp here, this is from the time of uh, the late period. Also, the three columns behind this mud brick cramp remain unfinished. <laughs> show how they were able to make those beautifully rounded things. So the first item that they needed to keep of those five main items is the pilot. The pilot would take it. Esse é o maior templo do Egito. Levou mil e trezentos. Esse é o André. Levou mil e trezentos anos para ser construído esse templo. 
2 mil, o cara falou. O outro falou 1.300. Os caras estão falando dando tão informação chutando. contraditória, viu? <risos> Perde um pouco a credibilidade. Esse é o portão do templo. E vários faraós contribuíram para a construção. Cada um fazia uma coisa aqui. Agora a gente entrou aqui no Eu templo e eu vou dar um 360 aqui para mostrar o tamanho dessas colunas. Precisa de mais de 10 homens em volta para poder fazer toda a circunferência das colunas. Quer ver? Esse é exatamente o meio do templo. Olha as pessoas ali, o tamanho dessas colunas. Essa aqui está bem pertinho da gente. Gigantesca essa coluna. Seu André, mais uma vez, está vestido de árabe aí. Todas elas têm uma inscrição egípcia aí. E ali é a entrada que a gente falou do passado. Da lado para a primeira, primeira parte. A coluna. Elas vão embora lá para cima. São bem altas. How many? Twelve. No, we would need at least ten. So we would need ten men. How many? Dez homens fazendo um circo para poder dar a volta nessa coluna inteira.
and gentlemen, as you just saw, this was a very quick item about making the day fancy bottles. Now, if you don't mind, please follow me inside to take an idea about everything in there. Let's go, please. Oui. But I'd like to start by offering a small drink to make some refreshment. We have mint tea and coffee as hot drinks. We have a local juice, we call it Kerkadi. We get it from the hibiscus flower. We offer it cold and it's very good for blood circulation. Sorry about the drinks. All the drinks here are made from mineral water. So easy to choose, but not easy to refuse. Yeah. So I would like to have the menti. Will you please raise that to count? Menti, menti, hot menti. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me shake. Coffee, coffee. Hibiscus juice, cold. Hibiscus cold. One, two, three, four. Whiskey, champagne, but after midnight. <laughs> Okay, this is first a small list for our piece here. Pure extract of flowers. And I'd like to say that there is a big difference between the oil and the commercial perfumes. These essential oils are more concentrated, more natural than the perfumes. It doesn't have any alcohol chemicals. We get it by pressing the petals of the flowers by heavy wooden machines to receive this oil drop by. Like, if you look to the list among your hands, you will find three different groups from this oil. First group at the top, all the oils that we get from separate flowers, jasmine, for example, rose, gardenia, and so on, till number 20. Then we have a uh, second group, essence blend. Uh, we take all the separate flowers and we mix it together a different proportion to make one essential oil. We have another stuff at the bottom of the list. By sensi stuff, we get it from wood, from trees, or from herbs. Uh, how we can use this essential oil, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, there is three or four different ways to use the oil. The best way, pure as it is. Why? Because all we need to perfume our body with the pure essential oil, two little drops behind our ears and the rest of the arms. This is enough to give us our favorite smell during the day. I mean, it doesn't evaporate. Besides that, it doesn't burn or dry uh, the skin, like what the commercial staff do sometimes. During the explanation, I will show you some other ways to use this oil. But now, let's pick up a few kinds from this oil together to give you a practical idea about it. And I'd like to start with the oil number 11, one of the most famous oils we produce here in Egypt, the lotus essential. To try the oil, I need to put little touch at the rest of your arm from the oil, massage it uh, with your finger for a few seconds, then smell it after. So lotus essential oil number 11, this is going to if anybody wanted to are you from Brazil, sir? Yeah, we have some guys, they are speaking. We have a Okay, let's get started with this place. <laughs> Hello. 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 Wake up. Hello. Hello. Uh, first of all, I welcome here in our institute. I would like to give you a brief idea and a short idea about how the ancient Egyptian make the paper from this papyrus plant. Do you believe that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why? We have to. Because you're telling us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Here it is. That's the papyrus plant in ancient times. Sacred this plant for two reasons. First one is a stem. And this is some looks like a pyramid. Look, yeah. mm -hmm. have you seen it, the pyramids before? Yes. yes. A pyramid in ancient time it's a symbol of eternity and the long life. Second reason we have that flowers. This looks like the sunray, a symbol of Amora, the god of the sun. Real papyrus. It's a very high, around two meters or six meters high. But we have that one here to only demonstrations. To make a paper like the ancient time used to do, we cut this stem to many slices like that one here to make a big or the small sheet. But the paper, it's the length of the papyrus. Now I wanted to make a one paper. We get anyone over here, and we remove the outer green part. <laughs> and this green part, it's very strong. 
in ancient time used the Asai to make many things like boats, sandals, mats, furniture, and then we have the inner part, it's the papyrus, we cut that one here, but when you make anything with that part, it will be prepped. Why? Because the shake consists of 50% water and the 50% sugar. Now I would like to get the sugar and the water outside this part. To do this, I will use two things. A wood of hammer, we knock here to make in that one flat and thin. Do you like to pour a finger down? No. It's a good feeling, it's your mood. Like at this, you can see some more resin coming out here. And the second tool we have here, it's the rolling pen. Do you have one in your kitchen? Yes. To push your house when you come in the house? No. He is? <laughs> Do you have any props in the head? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, okay. Look at this, you can see all the water, it's coming out here. Wow. And now our slices, it's a flexible one, easy to running in my finger, and that one here becomes stronger. To reduce the amount of the sugar, we'll leave our slices in a water for a few of days. Behind you have two different colors, white, paper, and the brown one. How we get it both? If we need white sheet, we leave it our slices in the water for six days and also under the hand press another six days. For the brown paper, longer time. Two weeks in the water and the two weeks under the wow. press. To make a paper, we put it these slices between two pieces of carpet or anything is absorbed with the water in horizontal and vertical wires. Uh, excuse me, where are you from? US. Where are you from? US. US. First time in Egypt? First yeah. Yeah. Yes. Me too, welcome. <laughs> Anybody second? Second. Second time. Are you ready for the difficulty questions? Yes. Can you remember who's the first wife for a king of Rome since the second? Oh. I think it's Nefertiti, isn't it? Yes. Nefertiti. 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 Yeah, that's right. It's the perfume that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nefertiti, she's a wife of the king Ignatz. Uh. She's the daughter of the professor, so she. she. She better knows that. Yeah. 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 Right. And do you know what's meaning Nefertari? Beautiful. Beautiful. Most beautiful. What does it mean? Most beautiful. beautiful. Yes, like at this. Take a photo but quickly because it's very heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Any more? <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. You talk too much and then you make a photo. Yes, that's enough. And then we put it down here, we cover it, and we leave it under the press. How many days for the white sheet? Six. Correct. And the brown? Two weeks. No, 14 days. Yeah, 14 days. My question is how many, how many days, not how many weeks. Okay. Lady, do you want to pour a finger down? Just six days for the white sheet. Is it white enough? Yeah. By the way, this machine, it's a modern machine, but in ancient times they are using anything heavy, like two blocks of stones or very big Egyptian lady. <laughs> <laughs> six days in the war and six days under the breast, we get a nice sheet like this paper over here. Right. Quickly, do you know the rules? <laughs> yeah. It's also heavy. Yeah, yes. And now I have a very important question. questions. How do you know the difference shade between fake paper, false paper and original? Yeah. We don't. We don't. No. Tasty. This is why I come here. Any idea? <laughs> say, say no, that's easy. No. No. Give yeah. break. Is it cut easy? Uh, I will see. Uh, now I show you the difference between the one outside and the two or tumbles. You can see some guys holding the paper inside the plastic bags or in a small box. Look, our paper it's not heavy. Other one it's very. Our paper it's very thin. Other one it's very thick. Very strong paper. Flexible, easy to run it without any damage. Wow. And if we put it the paper under any sort of light, you can see clear, crisscross, cross, and some brown dots. What? And these brown dots over here, it's a symbol of the sugar because the sugar it's activate when we leave it under the breast. But outside on the street, if you see the same like this paper, never to see the paper in horizontal and vertical, just one line. Why? Because outside on the street, they are made of paper by banana leaves or sugar cane leaves on the papyrus. Why outside use banana? Cheaper one than the papyrus and easily to get it from anywhere. But the papyrus, I mean the plant, it grew up beside the river line on the delta. Mm -hmm. When you finish this paper, we send our paper in the faculty and find artists to draw it. We have the many professional artists like that one here, Murat. And he is Gamel. There's also another difference between fake and original. 
our paper over here it's free hand but outside it's printed our colors we used it's natural colors clear yes sir now i must be honest with you i can explain all the things we have i just explained the important story in ancient time we will start with the final judgment and something else we will leave it though the, the paper in the water again and we will see it after we finish the demonstrations the original copy of these paintings kept now in a British museum in London on the second floor. On the top, the dead person, his name is any kneeling in front of 14 judges. Seven from Lower Egypt without the key of life, and seven from Upper Egypt holding the key of life. And those 14 judges asking the dead person many questions about his life. Have you ever killed? Have you put something dirty double nine? And no answer is not negative answer. As you can see here, the dead person hand in hand with a nobis god of mummification with the head of the jackal. Take the heart of the dead person and put it on a balance test. Second is scales, the feather of my goddess of justice and the truth. Now we have two means. F, the feather, heavier than the heart, this person, it's the good person, his heart is pure. They are saying the dead person by horse, they get the protection, the head of the falcon. Inside the paradise, Osiris, get the other wallet with his holy family, two female. His wife, Isis, get a superior love, and his sister, Nephthys, goddess of magic. For sons of Horus, a tiny gob on the lotus flower, on the top eye of Horus with the feather of might to get the justice and the flying protect. But if the heart hidden than the feather, this person, it's a bad person, is guilty. As you can see here, this is the only animal, eat the heart of the dead person, tough, get up the nurture writing, recording inside this book. This person is the good or a bad person. Any questions? No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this here. It's the tree of life or the tree of the paradise. Okay, here five paradise. That's the five stages in the human being. Birthhood, childhood, youth, marriage, and a wisdom age. For paradise looking for that is looking for the life. And the last one looking for waste, or waiting to go to paradise. Clear. Finally, or last thing I would like to show you here, it's a very important design in ancient time. We call that one here, it's a royal form or the cartoon design. In ancient time, only the king and the queens, they are putting the names inside the cartoons. And this cartoon, it's a symbol of eternity and the good luck. Now, if you want to write your name, friends, children, anybody, we have here the many professional artists to translate your name from English to hieroglyphics alphabet and this cost it's 20 Egyptian pounds extra for each name not each letters and it doesn't matter how many letters you have in your name also if you wanted to write anything down inside the cartouche just two minutes every single piece around you you'll find the three masterpieces signature of the artist and two numbers the blue one number of the model, the red one, it's the price in Egyptian pounds. Here in our government place, we accept any kind of currency, any kind of credit card without any charge. Also, if you would like to buy anything, but you don't enough money right now, you can take it and you can pay later in your hotel or in your shop. As to transportation, we have this tube. It's a very strong one, safety for all over the world. If you wanted to buy anything, we were rolling here without any damage, plus guarantee certificate from our government place. How do you give an order? I think all of you have a white card. Yes. Show yes. me one, please. Yes, thank you, sir. <laughs> In case, if anything you do like, out down here, number of the model, quantity, how many pieces, one million, two million, as you wish. <laughs> and over one million, you'll take this hand press for free <laughs> and hit the price in Egyptian pounds. Also for your group, if you buy anything over 100 Egyptian pounds, they will take 20% off. Also, for example, if any large piece that you like, like that or that, but very big in the wall, we have the same one in a small version, in a white or a brown paper. Before you go, I wanted to show you what we have done. After just a few seconds, without any chemical tools added in front of your eyes, and also can you imagine what will happen after six days. Look at this, it's a little bit sticky. In the end, thank you for listening to me, and please forgive me for any mistakes in my language. If you have any questions, I'm with you, my name is Mohammed, or any of my colleagues over here, they are also Mohammed, and we are here to just helping <laughs> not to hustle, I look in the paper after just a few minutes. 
Look at this. That uh, sticks together, and also that horizontal and the vertical. That one is not a illusion. Okay. Thank you. So can you put it together again? Can we put it under between two pieces of uh, linen, and we put it under this. Before you look around behind you, you welcome drink. Please take it and have a look around. Good luck. Thank you. Aqui está o artista que está fazendo, está escrevendo no papiro. Nossos três nomes, esse primeiro é o da Stephanie, né? em hieróglifo, é escrita egípcia. O mar é o custo, mãe. E te parecem elas muchachas, né, que estão aí... Em casa. Não, quando o brasileiro vieram no dia da Lula da Silva, compraram mais. Já <risos> era você, esse não faz nada, brasileiro. Sou um buferino. E esse aqui é o vendedor que fala espanhol. Tá Sim, aí, o olha, nosso viva amigo Portugal. Que fez... Viva Brasil, que não compra nada. <risos> que fez preço especial pra gente aqui. Tá aqui ele escrevendo o nome. Está escrevendo bonito. Um artista humilde. يا مصطفى ان شاء الله في تعاون مصر يا مصطفى يا مصطفى قول يا رب بوب شمال زين كل ب 20 جنيه كل ب 20 جنيه انا بجيز بجيز بومبا كده انت طبيعه الزباين ايه بس بس كده الشماعه دي امال يا واد عم ما فيش عندي طبيعه الزباين ليه ما مش في زبون تجي لك اسم واحد ب 100 بس قاعد امسك حته ودا عمك كاتب لك تلات اسماء ب 280 نار. طيب ما قالش يعني شبكان عن الزبون. اه يا ابو لهب لو فاحب برد ما هيعمل كده يا راجل. ما علينا بتاع عنا اقصاد يا اخو علينا حاجات اقصاد. تم زوتوس كده ستيك من الواجه. افيروس ميندوس. افيروس سوى ميندوس تنوت تيرن كليتش براك امبرار. نواي دينيرا نواي دينيرا. Então, ah, esses viva, Brasil, que tem estudiante, há que comprar, tem que comprar um que não tem desenho nenhum, só com os nomes, que é o que o dinheiro dá. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Oh, is that your name? My name, wow. my wife's name. Uh -huh. no, and your that, kid's name? Yeah, my, my daughter's name. Oh. My wife's name is really long. That's why it takes almost a whole. Yeah. Oh. Huh? Oh, so if you write all the names, twenty dollars, twenty pounds each. And okay, Joel. And huh? what? Joel, Kristen, and Stephen. Yeah. Sir, sir. But thinking of PhD in archaeology, right? That's your dream. <laughs> <laughs>
Esse é o tempo de Luxor, um tempo de adoração que tinha aqui na cidade de Luxor, que era a capital do Império Sul do Egito. Era o principal templo de adoração dos egípcios. E mesmo quando o império se uniu, aqui era o, a capital do, do império. Esse aqui é um obelisco, que é um objeto de adoração ao deus da fertilidade. E todos os, os hierógrafos. A gente já vai entrar nesse templo ali para dar uma olhada ali dentro. Número 2 é o que você vê sobre o futuro de Hans. O que é isso? Windows. Windows. E a porta, talvez, uma vez encontrada na porta, que levou a uma mosca. Antes do templo foi descoberto, essa parte foi cobrada em sand. Então a mosca foi colocada em cima dessa plataforma, pensando que isso poderia fazer uma bonita infraestrutura para for the mosque, like a foundation, like a early foundation. So, the temple was totally buried in the sand. Only the top part was, was like, very obvious and was like, showed to the people, but not the bottom part. So, those who built the mosque thought this ground would be hard enough and solid enough for the beautiful infrastructure, that they wouldn't have to build an extra infrastructure for the mosque. So they built that mosque right on top. And this used to be the entrance to the mosque. The date in Egyptian temple. The one more secret. You look at those drawings, and, and they seem pretty, pretty normal, but they're not. The way that they position their bodies is impossible. Like in, in reality, it can't happen. To show your shoulders from profile and your, your lower half from a frontal view, yet you would show your two thumbs and your two toes. What does that mean? They would use either two left hands or two right hands. But because they were geniuses, you couldn't even realize that. Like, if I hadn't told you, you would have never realized that. But when we get to walk through the temple and see some, some of those uh, carvings, look at that, look at their feet, and you would see two left feet or two right feet. The bottom thing is to show the toes, because they wanted to have the toes remember in the afterlife. Anything that, that's not very obvious and not very clear from the carving, we wouldn't have in the afterlife. That's why they would have the shoulder from frontal view and the lower part from side view. We look at those pictures, like those carvings, and try to imitate them, that's impossible. Perfectly impossible. But you look at them and you think they're so normal and so natural, just like that. They come out naturally. So, now we're walking through the open court. Is it? No. no. Why not? It is for the city, for the place. It doesn't have this bottom part. Yeah. And it shows a little bit of a decoration around the edges, like dashes. So it's not a cartouche. It's just a form so they can fit in the names of what are these? Kings? No, nope. no enemies. Captives that he brought from the Battle of Kadesh. You watch uh, those action movies and you see the criminal being handcuffed and he always get away. Sometimes he would dislocate his thumb, sometimes he would use like a pin or something to get rid of those handcuffs. But they, have a different, they had a different opinion about this. They would never handcuff their captives. But for this they invented a very unique technique. May we have a volunteer? A volunteer? For what? A big guy. We want the volunteer. True. To demonstrate on. 
Vai me ter pão. Eu vou lá. Eu vou lá. Eu vou lá. <risos>
povo cultural aqui, o povo nativo. Então, esse é o, o, o Santíssimo já do, do tempo, né? O Santo dos Santos. Esse local só o rei, o faraó e o, e o sumo sacerdote poderiam vir aqui, os egípcios, claro. This stayed all the way the same, like the discrimination stayed the same until uh, the year 303. This is where the discrimination took a different path, like a different turn. What happened in 303? Diocletian issued a decree with which he gave clear orders to his soldiers to kill all the Christians and tear down all the churches. It happened during a pagan feast known as the Terminali Feast. So, in exactly 303, he started discriminating the Christians officially by issuing a decree that stated that all the Christians should be killed and all the churches should be torn down. And that's an evidence that Egypt, in the early 4th century AD, had churches. Why would they issue a decree saying, tear down the churches of Egypt, unless there were churches in Egypt at that time? So, anyways, this dark period remained all the way from 303 until Constantine issued his famous decree known as the Edict of Milan, or his very famous edict. When was that? Nicaea. In 313. So for 10 long years, they were discriminated against. Very much discriminated against. The same happened here in Luxor. But after the decree was issued, guess what happened? Polytheism and Christianity walked hand in hand, all the way until the time of Justinian, when he gave clear orders to his soldiers to close down all the Egyptian forces. So for all that time, between 313 and uh, around 545 AD, you would come to the temple for practicing your faith, and you would take two different paths, like one Egyptian, like one polytheistic Egyptian, one Christian Egyptian walk to the same temple to practice their own faith, each on his own side. Some parts of the temples were converted into churches like where we are now. You see that they plastered that part, and you can see if you shed some light on that angle here, that you can see some of the pictures, some of the paintings of the old saints. So this old part of the temple was converted and turned into a church. They also added the two columns here and made an arch. The arch never existed before. Like, this whole area was a passageway to the holy part. Started in 20, this point here, all the way to that point here. And we added that arch and you can see some traces of some of the old saints and some of the old prophets. Can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This whole part was turned into the chapel and the church. Come for us to sit the stones. Come for us to sit the stones. Alright. <laughs> it means 5.30, 6, 6.30. Yeah, it's So 5.30 we wake up, 6 o'clock we put the luggage out and have breakfast, 6.30 we depart. 5, 5.30, 5.30, 6, 6.30. Okay, so this whole section was turned into a church until the time 
of, of 545 AD when the Egyptian temples were ordered to close down. That's when a different time of discrimination and a different way of discrimination started. This time it was the Christians discriminating the pagans for the polytheistics. They started chiseling away, chiseling off the Egyptian figures, like the faces of the gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt. The ancient Egyptians started to tease them about coming back alive to throw those scenes. So they were more like, okay, you're coming back to throw those scenes, there you go. So they started chiseling off their figures, chiseling off their eyes, their hands, their legs, so they can't walk, they can't breathe, they can't do anything. If you ever go to Aswan city, you will see that clearly. There's a temple known as Eightfoot Temple, dedicated to goddess Hathor, the cow goddess, this beautiful lady with the head of a cow and two horns, a sun disc. You see that her head was turned into a cross. The whole head was chiseled off and a cross was added instead. Now, walk into the Holy Fathers. This one was made by Alexander the Great himself. Made by Alexander the Great. Each Holy Fathers would have two doors, would have a ceiling, of course, would have two wooden doors. Oh, what a scene of style. No, and the top of every yeah, so far door post. I'm so um, and it also would have an offering table in the middle. And one more item. It would have a barn, like a little boat made of wood. On top of this barn, they would have a statue of the god that the temple is dedicated to. Also, they would have the two heads of the god on the two sides of the ship, one in the front and one in the back. Like, for instance, if we're talking about a temple dedicated to God Horus, then the barn would have two heads of God Horus. Had it up. We have two heads of the fountain, one in the front and one in the back. And we have a wooden chapel in the middle, and we have a statue of the god. And every morning, the priests, the high priests of the, of, of the temple would walk into the holy holies and add the sacrifices that, of course, by the end of the day, would take it to his place. Um, a lot of um, resources were put under the control of the high priest of, of God Eden. That made those priests very, very strong. The point that at some time they were able to control the king himself and they were able to make decisions and they were able to change kings like King Akhenaten, the one who called for, for monotheism, the one who thought it was time to deny all the 888 dozen goddesses and only worship and be dedicated to only one god. But the high priests of Amen were not happy with that because it was putting them out of business. Hundreds and thousands of people were working to maintain the temple. A lot of properties were just put under control of the, of the high priest of Amen to keep the temple up and running. Pretty much all the farms around the temples were uh, at the disposal of the temple. All, everything that, that those farms once upon a time had were totally dedicated to, to the restoration of the temple, to the, those who worked for the temple to keep the temple up and running, for the kings and queens to add their own contributions. So, uh, also, this uh, Holy of Hades suffered uh, a little damage from uh, the Christians, as you can see, they chiseled off the face and the arms of Alexander the Great as he was uh, making offerings to God Finn, the same God that we uh, saw at the Lesser Shop and on the, on the columns at the Roman Temple, the God of Fertility. That's him. There's another presentation of, of the god in the back, and they chiseled off most of his uh, impressive parts, as well as the head. And you can see that um, the god itself is missing two parts, like it's missing an arm and missing a leg. For this, they have a funny myth. The ancient Egyptians were pretty much connecting every change, political, geographical, or any of that. And even any discovery, like any scientific discovery that they would make, they would simply connect to a myth, like a nice story, to make it nice and attractive. Like for instance, when they found out about the four uh, extra days of the year, like at first they counted the days and they totaled 600, 360 days. When they learned about the other five days, they connected that to the story. Do you remember the story of the creation of the world? That, uh, get a note, they written in the sky, and they, they wanted to get married. Their grandfather said no. And he made an oath. He said, you are not to meet on any day of the year. So, the kids were so much in love. They went to the God of Wisdom, Thoth, the Ibis bird, the one who records everything. They wanted Thoth to find a way out. 
So I found those five extra days that the oath of uh, the grandfather did not include. So they were to meet only five days a year. But those five days were enough to have Isis, Osiris, Seth, and Nephthys. Very good. <laughs> Back of, of the sanctuary where the Holy of Holies has two of the So the rumor has it, or the story has it, the myth has it, that they pursued God men and they wanted to cut him off. So the only part that they could get was the arm and the leg. So they cut his arm off. And ever since that day, men became the God of fertility and God, uh, uh, very important God, to which uh, kings like Francis II and Alexander made offerings. This section here has a beautiful scene of the bark of God, the one I was talking about. So this bottom part shows the offering table here and uh, the bark of God that was made out of wood being laid on, uh, laid down on the offering table. And as you can see, it has two ram heads, one in the front and one in the back. That means that the temple here is dedicated or was dedicated to God in and uh, not for sure. The middle part would have wooden chapel that would have a statue of God men as well as some of the offerings. You can see that other gods and goddesses are protecting God men. One of them is Goddess Lut with her sizes with her stretched wings trying to protect um, the God. Also the back wall shows many of the scenes of the king Alexander making offerings to God men and here is what God was about. Sometimes they would show the king with two right arms or two left arms. Like, look at this. If I'm doing the same as he is, then my thumb would be the top one, so this one is right, but the top one shows the thumb on top and not at the bottom. So it doesn't happen. Sometimes they would show the same thing for the feet. Like they would use this just to show the toes, they would show two left feet or two right feet. Why is that? Because again, they wanted to have every single part of their bodies in the afterlife. And they thought if they would show one big toe and one small toe, they would never get the two big toes in the afterlife. Uh, the way that they showed their bodies also. They would never get Sorry? They would never get wet. Like if they didn't show, um, they would never get wet. No, they no, they would never like if they didn't show their their they big would, toes. They wouldn't get. They wouldn't get a big toe. Like like for instance, exactly. they always need to show the shoulders. Like in this position, like if I'm kneeling down, making offerings, I can't show the shoulder. Mm -hmm. That would be very awkward to show the shoulder. Yet you would keep the same position here. But again, because of the of the fact that they were geniuses in arts, they managed to show the shoulders. The bottom part as well as the two thumbs that they would keep visible all the time. Like, if you're holding a tray like this, it would definitely show me the, th uh, the thumb, your, le your left thumb, but you wouldn't be able to show the other thumb because it would be on the inside, not on the outside. Yeah. So it's more like he's doing like this, yet those fingers are flipped over like this. <clears throat> and this one is totally okay. Look at this one. Where did that superstition come from? From the theology. Oh, okay. Okay, are there any questions? Pretty exhausting. <laughs> I can see that. Okay, then this concludes the tour. Would you like to have some drink time? Or would you like to head straight to the hotel and have dinner instead? What's the time? Dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we you have to ask somewhere we have to ask him. Okay. Let's go back. Thank you.